And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys, I hope you're all well, before we do get into today's video, as always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Rangers content. Guys, in today's video we're going to be discussing the major Rangers dilemma. Look, of course, it's been four or five days now since the old firm defeat at the weekend, and as I said, due to the international break, we have had to stew on it for some time, and it's been a little bit harder to get over than other sort of defeats and bad results that we've had in the past but equally at the same time it's given me time to, to look at our problems um, and see what we need to do upon returning back from the international break and the one thing I have noticed within this Rangers team um, is that we have a major attacking dilemma now some Rangers fans may say we've got a dilemma all over the park some do see positives within the team me personally I do see a positive within our midfield I think our midfield is is pretty decent um, in terms of the players. Yes, on Sunday, not so great. But it, it, all in all, I do think we have a good midfield. Um, and our defence is, is pretty solid, bar, again, the last two games. Um, but I do think the problem lies with us is in the attacking third. Mate, all the time, in all of our games. I haven't really been convinced of our attacking uh, players. You know, this has had the most work done to it in terms of the overhaul. And we've seen so many players leave. Ryan Kent, Alfredo Morelos, Sholak, Fashion Zakala, and then all of these new faces come in, whether that be Seema, Dessas, Lammers, Danilo, all of these new players coming in through the door, it's almost been a wholesale changes in those attacking positions. And with that does come problems. And with that, there are problems. And this is where we need to discuss said dilemma and see how we can try and sort it out going forward. Now, let me give you a weird stat. In Rangers' first nine games so far this season, uh, we've had nine different starting 11s. Yes, we've only had, well, in terms of our attacking players, they've also been interchangeable. Our key strikers that we've brought in, Sam Lammers, Dessas, Danilo, they've only started together, or they've never actually started together, really, um, in a game. There was a one attacking, th attacking three that we had consecutively and that was in Savet and then into Livingston and apart from that it has all been completely interchangeable and different starting 11s have appeared. Now the issue here is with this is that whilst the players individually have scored a goal maybe they have scored a goal or two which is great to see you know starting at a new club getting a goal or two none of them are being able to do it on a consistent basis now the issue that this is poses is that we haven't really got our set attacking players Michael Bill doesn't know his best attacking players just yet an attacking formula which does uh, is unable to, to uh, cause it inconsistency so far in the early parts of this uh, of this of this season. Now, with regards to our attacking players in general, you know it takes the way that Michael Bill does play. He does give the players an attacking license. You know, a, he doesn't really root them down to one area. He likes the players to be creative. He likes the players to express themselves. But with this, it takes time and confidence and gelling together to really be able to find that creativity and that spark that these players desire. So one save and grace of this would be is that our players do need a bit of time but they need time to be playing week in and week out now the one that does confuse me the most the player has played the most is probably Dessas Lammers hasn't really played he's come off of the bench however the one that really confuses me the most is Danilo now Danilo is probably the player that we all got excited about the most uh, upon him arriving um, from Feyenoord Rotterdam look come from a team that just won the league and was one of the actual strikers if you look at Lammers Dessas uh, that actually had numbers to his game. Danilo looked like an actual striker that was putting the ball into the back of the net one every two games um, throughout his career. That same cannot be said for Lammers. Same cannot be said for Dessas. Now, I do believe, certainly, is that we should. The, the notable... Uh, question marks that we've had in the early parts of the season is why has Danilo's game been so limited? Why hasn't he been playing that much? That's the questions that we posed to maybe... Michael Bill, but this is certainly something that we need to sort out during this international break. I do think Danilo should be the centerpiece of this attacking three, if we're going to be going with an attacking three, and is a player that's going to be scoring most of the goals. Now, going into this international break and going beyond, we do need to have him, one, as the centerpiece, but then two, also find a dynamic that we're going to stick with going into that game against St. Johnston, then into that game against Real Betis, and really build that chemistry towards our attacking players 
and then one you know the confidence breeds you know we gel all the rest of it and the goals will start to come in but this is the attacking areas that we need to do we need to find consistency in those attacking positions and make sure players like Danilo get up and running he's probably one of the ones that I do have a lot of faith in just because of his background also so I'm hoping here we can go into the international break or go after the international break with a more um uh, structured, not structured, but a more um, definitive front three of what we're going to be going for. And there's not changes every single week. This is something Michael Bill needs to work out during this international break and really find a front three that we are going to stick with so they can then get their confidence going. That then uh, will lead to more goals. Goals leads to more confidence. Confidence leads to more flair. Flair leads to just more better football in general. Um, and the way that Michael Beal, as I said, likes to play with his players being very um, creative and the, the roam to run free, attacking license is given. Um, it, it, is, it can create such beautiful football, especially in those attacking areas. So, as I said, to summarise, we need to... Um, sort this attacking area out and stop with the changes in that front three and really have a structured one going forward with Danilo as the centerpiece. I do think that is very, very important. Uh, but yeah, enough about that rambling on about our major dilemma. I do think that is where all our problems come from. Um, even just the players missing so many sitters. Games could change. Even in the game against Celtic, there were so many sitters that there were there also. Um, so yeah, I do think this needs to be eradicated very, very soon. And hopefully over this international break, that's something that is going to be mended. Now, in other news, Scott Arfield has issued a defence of Rangers captain James Tavernier, insisting that the Englishman has a strong mentality. Now, a lot of people have been slamming the captain after the game and stripping the, the armband off of him. Again, I've never really got those sort of cries unfortunately a tavern is probably one of my favorite players and i think he does lead by example by coming up with the goods yeah some people question his defensive performances but i do think um cause to strip him of the captain's armband i've never really been there for it um however scott arfield was speaking to the athletic and basically said it's extremely unfair mentality can come in it in many ways tav has played more than 400 games and never missed anything talk about mentality as a professional how many would crumble at just the thought of going to play in front of fifty thousand? It's a completely different thing. If you're putting yourself on the line every time, then sometimes you're going to lose. So yeah, that's Scott Arfield's thoughts with regards to James Tavernier and doesn't think that he has, he, he does have the mentality to be a Rangers captain. As I said, I do think uh, James Tavernier is often used as a scapegoat in terms of these leaders. Um, but as I said, I do think he does have a mentality. That's me and my, my, my personal opinion. And Scott Arfield is backing that one up as well. So uh, certainly an interesting one uh, there indeed. But Rangers fans, that's all I've really got for you today. Do let me know your thoughts on our attacking dilemma. Um, and what do you think is going to make this, 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 our attack better? What's going to make us score more goals? What do you think the answer is? As I said, let me know down there in the comment section below. That does bring us to the end of today's video. As always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Rangers content. Thank you guys and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.